Thank you, Ayman. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Devankur Sanyal. I'm a new soil health specialist. Um, I think around like eight to 10 months ago, I was here interviewing for this position. So this place still gives me some goosebumps. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, I will talk about some of my plans and ideas. They're all scratch because they need your, yeah, thank you. They need your uh, kind of uh, guidance and uh, some suggestions so that I can build my program. Uh, uh, specifically, I'm a soil health specialist by title here. And I have a lot of extension work. I'm stationed here. My office is just down the hall. Um, I will talk more about what I think about soil health. I want to share my ideas with you, and then we can always figure out what we can do to improve soil health. Uh, because I understand soil health is uh, a relatively new uh, term and concept, and uh, uh, people define soil health in different ways. Um, but as I understand it, Soil health is actually a kind of sustainable management of ecosystem, agroecosystem. It's everything comes under soil health, uh, controlling pests, weeds, uh, diseases, starting from there to having more nutrients in soil, keeping more moisture on ground, having more carbon sequestered if possible. We'll talk about those things over and over. And, uh, but my focus is kind of an overarching goal of soil health. Uh, I'll start with the definition. Uh, don't read it. Uh, people, people define soil health different ways because the basic of soil health is it is very specific to the situation. Like what you are looking for if your soil is supporting that need. So I kind of like this definition. It says it's the capacity of the soil to provide its functions. That, it, that you require from as, as a commercial agriculture uh, person or whoever is supporting commercial agriculture, they do have certain needs based on uh, their, their system, their management ideas, their availability of uh, equipment and other, other targets. So soil health cannot be defined uh, with uh, some singular terms. It should be adjusted every time you have a specific goal and uh, a target in your mind. So I kind of like this, it says like, if soil or pro soil functions, like providing support, nutrients, water, controlling uh, pathogens and, uh, and boosting beneficial microbes in your soil, uh, then you will say the soil is healthy. Uh, and that is another reason I don't want to score soil health and I, do not want to talk about those score based systems because they are uh, kind of validated against certain systems. In Arizona, we, we deal with probably something different and at different places. So if you go east to west, north to south, we will get different levels or ranges of, um, if, you, if you call it a number of certain parameters. Uh, so we, we really cannot say that if you score 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever it is, your soil is healthy. It, it depends on if you are getting whatever you are expecting from your soil or you are managing your soil in such a way that you are looking for certain areas. Some basic like, okay, structure of the soil because so that your air and water can move through your soil, provide enough food and uh, nutrition and water to the biology of soil. And that includes plant roots and some other plant parts that is inside soil and above soil. Uh, biodiversity is a big deal. And when we talk about biodiversity, there is no question. We all know that soil kind of resides probably the maximum, the most number of communities of living or semi-living uh, entities in, in this world. Uh, bacteria and other microbes and macrofauna, they all really reside in soil. So the diversity of soil kind of helps soil do its function in a way we want them to do. Uh, definitely, we need to boost crop production. And when you say crop production, it's both quantity and quality. Oh, I'm sorry. Then, sustain a healthy environment. Uh, we, we have been talking about different pollutions, greenhouse gas emissions, 
And it's all part of soil because soil is kind of a think about it as a filtration system. It can filter well or poorly. So if it doesn't filter well, so water and uh, other fluids in soil can move polluting uh, agents. It can be a, a greenhouse gas, can be some uh, chemical, uh, which is not good for uh, human health or, uh, or livestock health. So uh, we have to create a sustainable, healthy environment through soil health. And after all, we, we are all human. So we, we think about human welfare and uh, how we can, the whole ecosystem can thrive and be sustainable over time. Why do you care? Uh, because soil needs maintenance, like your car, your, your home, it needs maintenance. It takes a lot of time to build a soil, a, a gram of soil. So it, it, it does need a lot of maintenance. And we do use soil pretty extensively since the last 50, 60 years. Uh, so it needs care and maintenance. And uh, Sustainability, it's such a broad term, there is no easy way to define it. But as I think, sustainability means both environmental and socioeconomic. Because you have to be, you have to be profitable to sustain a system, a run. So you cannot always talk, like you have to find a sweet spot where, where you think about environment and your forms of profitability. So it, is, it should go both ways, it should be a good balance between uh, the environmental and social sustainability. Uh, crop production, we, we did intensify our crop production because we have more people to feed now and less ground to uh, grow crops because of desertification that is happening all over the world. So definitely we need uh, to uh, get as much as crop we can get from soil and we are not, if we don't maintain and care for soil, we will make it unhealthy, like if you do the uh, Yes, and we need to conserve the natural resources. Uh, it can be air, water, uh, nutrients, and soil, and soil is another natural resource uh, through this whole uh, idea of soil. These principles are given by USDA, NRCS, United States Department of Agriculture and uh, Natural Resource Conservation. Uh, uh, natural in our service, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I changed the terms a little. Uh, so soil armor is anything that can provide some protection to the soil. It can be soil armor. It can be crop. It can be residues. Anything. Living roots. Why living roots are important? Because uh, I, I, I care a lot about. Um, okay, we are we are growing forage and we are cutting the forage, so roots are still on ground. But maybe roots are not leaking enough exudates for the microbes because the crop is there, the root is not functioning. So we do get some carbon from the uh, from the root biomass, but we do not get the communication between the roots and uh, the, the microbial uh, community that actually cycles all the nutrients, all the products, all the, anything that you add to it that is foreign to soil, the cycle. Uh, so uh, maintaining living roots is important. Diversity, yes, uh, we need to grow different crops. So this root exudes and the connections between microbes. So it's not a same group of friendship between the crop and the microbes. Different groups of crop might make friendship with different groups of microbes. So all the microbes will get their needed uh, exudates, uh, their sugars, their, their, their food from their crops. So, and but they will thrive uh, for more time. They, they will thrive longer. Livestock integration, I'm not talking about it. And right now here it says, I told you this is USDA and RCS. They want to uh, uh, convey the message that once you integrate livestock or part of livestock into the system, it completes the cycle of all the uh, essential elements, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, you can name it. Uh, because the whole cycle uh, starts and finishes in the soil. If the livestock is there, they can graze and they can poop and there's urine, so everything comes back to the soil at certain level. And number five is minimizing soil disturbance. It's not about 
changing your tillage pattern, not about uh, doing some extra practices. It's about minimizing soil disturbance in any way possible. You want to leave a crop longer. You want to grow a perennial crop. You want to uh, reduce the number of passes you take to till the soil. Anything that anything that minimizes soil disturbance can be considered under this this uh, principle of soil health, which is minimizing soil uh, disturbance. And definitely, conservation tillage, strip tillage, pulp tillage—they are all—they all come under this. But also, different cropping system, different cropping rotation, leaving some perennials on ground like alfalfa—it can be uh, contributing significantly to this minimizing soil disturbance, right? Um, Ultimately, our target is conserving soil moisture, and that should come uh, as a byproduct of all these principles and minimize chemical use. We don't want that much foreign material in there because everything is either soil or some kind of agent that we are adding to the soil. It can be any chemical, be fertilizer, pesticide, herbicides, whatever it is, it's foreign to the soil. And anything foreign is not very good for any health. So it's not good for soil health, too. So we have to, and we cannot go zero on anything. Or cannot drastically reduce any application of any chemicals because that then the system will, will not thrive. So I, I told in the beginning that it should be both environment and socioeconomic. So, but we have to find ways to how we can minimize uh, the chemical use. So, what should we expect? We should expect economic resilience. We should expect a resilient system. And reduce biotic stress. Improve soil biology because biology is the cycle. Unless there is life in soil and they're they're surviving properly, no nutrients can get released. You can add as many as manure, compost, nutrients in the soil. They will be uh, not coming to the plant or the crop where you want. Or uh, they probably will be in the places where you don't want them to be, like in water, in groundwater. And ultimately, you need to increase crop productivity because we have to feed a, a, a relatively large population uh, with a relatively less amount of crop land. Now, what are the challenges here? Uh, I, I'm here just three months. Uh, it started in January. So I, I, I'm talking to people. I'm learning more every day. So every time you hear me, you might see two or three things adding up there. But currently, I kind of figured out that it's because of our climate. Now we talk about carbon, we can talk about carbon all day long, but we have to understand at a certain point that given the climate condition that we get here, we cannot, it cannot increase carbon levels in a sustainable way for a long time. Because what happens, we have higher temperatures. We have higher temperatures with less amount of precipitation, right? So what happens? When any, any reaction goes very fast, any reaction where uh, goes very fast with higher temperature, and our microbes are waiting their dormant role in most of the days, suddenly, uh, uh, I mean, if they get any kind of activity, they will decompose the materials they find very, very, very fast. So we cannot keep carbon issues material in soil for long, uh, at least the way the climate looks. But what we can do, we can increase a little bit and make it a sustainable thing. Because we can try adding a lot of organic compounds, biochar, and all this stuff. I, I don't know, I did not do research. But what I feel and what I heard from other people who are doing research is like it's very hard, even if you add some organic supplement, they don't stay. They, you will see it for only for one or two years or two seasons. But after three seasons, the, you will see that the carbon is declining and coming back to the uh, earlier level. So we have to figure out a way how to combat that. And uh, that's where I need to uh, Salt is another uh, byproduct of this environment. It's salt goes wherever water goes. Now water is moving up, upward uh, to atmosphere. So it brings all the salt that you have through fertilizer or that is there already, or that is came through a little bit of precipitation, or it's just the mineralogy. Every salt come up from the below profile to the top profile, the surface uh, of the, the soil where we grow the crop. And that's why we get the salinity problem. Uh, we all know about carbonates and we all know about how phosphorus levels are low and why we have a lot of calcium um, that is also bound to the carbon. 
that this also acts with sodium. Anything that can be solubilized with water and moves with water will come at the top soil profile that makes this salinity problem. And there is not real chemical way to leach those down other than you put a head of water and, and leach those down. So now soil health uh, with all around the world, people are talking about doing really like um, uh, drip irrigation and all this. Uh, highly efficient water management systems, but we have to think about bleaching those salts, pushing those salts down below our root zone. So we have to come up with some kind of hybrids. And I'll be working with some of those, I'm working on, on drafting some plants. Uh, so I will have some data, which maybe in a couple of years, but I don't know exactly when. But we have to work with that. And uh, other primary challenges, definitely shortage of water. Uh, there is no question about that quality of water. So, uh, you know, we, we do in central Arizona have a lot of alfalfa and forage crops growing. The good thing is we can actually use a lot of uh, poor quality. I mean, not that bad, but at least we can our range of using poor quality water uh, is higher than other crops that cannot even tolerate a little bit extra salt in the water. So that's one good thing. Uh, but Again, quality is definitely a problem. Uh, organic matter decomposition and survival of soil organisms. So organisms need two, two main things, carbon and nitrogen. Definitely phosphorus and other things are there. But carbon is for energy, you know, ADP and everything. And then you need nitrogen to, for protein to build up their bodies. So unless we, we can keep uh, some organic matter, some carbon in the soil, we cannot feed these all organisms unless we have a continuous source of carbon, which is maybe very small, like root exudates, like the sewers that plants uh, give up. Uh, other than that, there's not much source for food for these microbes. So to have them, uh, so have them uh, some food in the soil, we have to keep maintaining this uh, soil, so some crops, some roots, some living roots, some extra, and other other ways. Now, nothing much in there, very, really, very really popular picture here. We look at our state and see that negative 63 inch per year. This is the difference between how much this crops and uh, take up through even the transportation, how much precipitation we get. So, <laughs> so it is really normal that we will have water shortage because we are losing 63 inches of water a year. And that's a whole estimate. And then, model based estimate. So this is not true, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower, but the idea is we, we, we will have to work with water shortages. I mean, there is no other way and it will probably going to get worse and everyone knows that. So we have to build some way we can save a little amount of water. It cannot be a drastic change, I am telling you. Uh, and I, I don't believe that there's no treatment, no management practice that can drastically change the scenario, no man practice. Suddenly, it, it, the whole atmosphere has to change, but it is not possible. So the idea is we have to work with this. We have here, we have to work with this to figure out, we, are, we need to figure out, and I need a lot of you. Uh, just cool photos, I, 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 I'll be there very soon. I, I still, I keep talking about going there, but I just couldn't that, that I have some, time to see this uh, beautiful lakes, but they're not as beautiful as it was. I, I can just imagine and see the, the how much water will last uh, looking at the landscape, uh, Lake Mina, Lake Powell. Now, talk, talked about salt a lot, um, and the, the chemistry, the basic chemistry that I understand from my uh, learning is like, water takes everything with it. Everything, biology, carbon, salt, every good and bad thing moves with water. And our water movement is upwards because we are losing 60 inches of water every, every year, uh, according to the estimate. So uh, this is Kalichi, and it's a very common thing. And I, I found that a couple of times uh, when I try sampling. It's a very new thing for me. Uh, but it is everywhere. So working with this, I don't know. I mean, no, no existing. Um, Existing reasonable, feasible management practice. 
I don't think any, anything that work with this bag, we have to work around it or with it when you cannot, you know, just get rid of this. Uh, but there are uh, ideas about some crops might have such certain kind of instruments that can slowly, slowly, uh, you know, decompose or break down this uh, strong carbonate bonds, right? I'm good with time, right? Yeah. Okay, ah, uh, I'll discuss a little bit about this and I talked about it. So now, um, everywhere you go, any, any part of this country or anywhere in the world, you, you will hear this. Okay, you have to keep residues on ground, you have to keep residues on ground, you have to add organic materials. But the problem is, we, we can keep organic materials, but how, how we can sustain it in the ground? Because I told you, when it will be like, 115, I heard that uh, it will happen sometime very soon. Um, 150 for a uh, couple of weeks at a stretch. This will like go like you know, uh, like fast food. I mean, I mean, this is this is a very bad situation here. No rain because what what water generally does is uh, kind of buffer the process of breakdown of uh, this carbon material. Without water, you don't have that. Have microbes that are hungry, they need energy. And whatever carbon or nitrogen they have access to, they will take it up. And listen to this. Carbon and nitrogen ratio is soil in the soil or in the material is very crucial. Now, you keep a high carbon nitrogen ratio material on ground, which is generally a grass-based material that has very high carbon nitrogen ratio. They will take the carbon, but they also need nitrogen to utilize that carbon. And they will take that nitrogen from your salt. Water is available. And that will be not, that will not be available to the crops that time, later in the year, that the, this microbes will build, uh, and we can measure that uh, using a parameter called uh, microbial biomass carbon, microbial biomass nitrogen. So if you have a high CN ratio, Carbon nitrogen ratio crop or raising on ground, what they will take the, to utilize that carbon, they will take up uh, the available nitrogen or nitrate form from the soil because microbes can use a lot, um, what I can say, a lot more complex forms of nitrogen from the soil. Like the, 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 the stronger bonds that they can break because it, it is a stage wide process. So it's a, let's say you have a food, some microbes come and they eat whatever they can eat. And these microbes have similar carbon nitrogen ratio to the risk because they, they need that for the body. Uh, so, so I call it building their body. So it's actually for the protein, they utilize a carbon nitrogen source similar to their own carbon nitrogen level. So there are different communities that take up different levels of carbon nitrogen. So they will keep breaking this carbon. Doesn't matter how much it is, they will keep breaking it. But if they need nitrogen and they'll find it in the residue, they will take it from the soil. So your soil is losing fertility too. And uh, I forget, I can talk about that a whole day, but I, I don't want to. The idea is it's very hard in this scenario to build a solar in matter because you know, what we have to do, we have to keep the connections going. I know that this situation is very bad. We don't have enough water to grow crop all 12 uh, months. But we have to maximize it. We have to get some fallow lands under cropping, any kind of cropping, anything. There should be something growing so these connections are there. So they don't take uh, the nitrogen form that we, we, we put for the crops and they use some of these exudates, some of these give outs by the plants for their, uh, for, for their uh, nutrition and their survival. So that's why it's so important to keep maintaining a healthy system uh, to keep some uh, healthy living roots on ground. Just because it may be adding, like adding carbon would not solve the problem. So how do you know? Yeah, this photo is from, from ADSU, not Dakota. So yeah, we, we, we don't see this here. Uh, this is very high carbon. I did my PhD from North Dakota. Uh, they have, like everyone has their own conference. And the problem is 
sometimes this high color matter is not very good because you have now this this microbes will come in with for food for nitrogen as they said so sometimes it's not very good for your plant cell because they will they will keep kicking up nitrogen then you keep adding so you keep adding so what do you see in a north dakota south dakota and midwest areas you don't see any uh any impact of addition of nutrients because these microbes are taking everything up and, and binding it up in their own body and it takes time to like when the microbes die eventually they come back but it's a long process to come this process so not always a very high rate matter is good if it is good then we could grow across in the forest forest in the top there it's a very top it's a very high rate matter reach it's not about having organic matter or carbon it's about having the right amount of the right fraction of uh, carbon matter there are different parts of organic matter and carbon so we need to have the right and that's why we need to diversify crops so that every fraction has their own chance to be there to be to 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 stay there for the uh, microbes that will be uh, there sometime uh, soon uh, uh, biology is important this is a mix of one uh, but there are microbes you cannot see we just see their effects so, uh, so th th these are biggest indicators and when they say organic matter never think about i'm talking about four percent five percent six percent it's not even matter if you have 0.5 you have 0.6 making it 0.62 or 0.63 or 0.65 for five years at, at, uh, for, for five years it's a great deal i mean that's great you don't have to make uh, from 0.5 to 0.3 in two years or five years it doesn't just it's not very sustainable. It, it takes time. It takes time, and your your climate condition, your water condition, your uh, elevation of the place, your your topography might not support it. So that is fine to have low solid matter. The idea is how it can increase slow. I think slow things are more sustainable than uh, drastic changes, right? So anything, uh, you know, structure, structures. Okay, when when I talk about soil health. I try to convey one, one important uh, message here. Soil health is not only about soil biology. It's biology, the physics, the physical structure, and chemistry and so on. Chemistry depends on soil concentration, pH, and all these things. Physical structure or physics, the physical ability of a soil, uh, a big, big deal is soil structure because it will control how your uh, soil would breathe and uh, how your microbes, uh, how, how the microbes in the soil will breathe, or there are anaerobic microbes that are very important, very, very uh, Like the biggest, the biggest enemies for this pathogenic microorganisms in the soil is probably <coughs> like fungus and other pathogenic microbes, it's probably the anaerobic community, right? And because uh, because anaerobic community cannot thrive in high oxygen atmosphere, sometimes you need some weight soil too. I mean, this cycle, this structure. So they will keep. If you if you have a good structure, they will they will have some pores that will always keep some moisture for these anaerobics, and they will always have some um, aeration for the ears. So. Having a good structure is very important, and building a good structure is very important. And I understand, cannot just grow no till all of a sudden, but we can always start building okay, a little, not towards having a no till soil, but towards building a better structure. Whatever you have, whatever you practice, whatever uh, crop you grow, how we can grow a little bit of structure. And there are certain measures, but literally, like, uh, like microbes, we do not have um, like hundreds of measures for small physical. There are only a couple, they're existing, and they, they are very uh, useful. Uh, like, you can measure compaction, you can measure water infiltration, you can measure how much water this soil can hold, what are the capacity. And you can also uh, look at how, 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 how many stable aggregates your soil can have. Uh, Things like that. So there are. So soil physical structure is also part of a good soil health. 
Importantly, definitely no need to explain. Uh, you need your source to provide interest to a crop. Water movement, and you know, uh, it's, 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 it's a, probably this is from someone from some sort of Iowa or somewhere, I don't know exactly. The idea is probably this is not exactly the situation here, but you know, if your soil doesn't have a good porosity, it will have more runoff, which so the water won't filter. Uh, where it needs to go, don't go there because it will cover the field in somewhere. Go run up and get out of the field. So having more porosity will have you have your will give your soil better chance to filter more water throughout your irrigation uh, regime through irrigation time. Right. So we do need uh, water movement, and that's a part of uh, soil physical problem. How many big areas erosion? I see that every day and I, I feel bad about it. Uh, just out there. Um, I feel bad about it, but we have to keep calm, right? So, the way I think soil health management is this it, it won't be only like testing soils and identify the processes and try to figure out what it can do. It also depends on what are the goals of the farm, what we have available, and what is the current status. So, it should build on that. Yeah. This should be our soil health management. This should be a micro. Now, I talked about uh, conserv con conservation tillage or just minimizing soil reserves. Uh, I talked about a little bit of how biology can help building your soil structure. And this is the legume uh, crop. This is mycorrhizae. This is compost that can boost. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to provide some additional carbon so that. You can re energize the, the soil microbes, right? So, this can help in that, not building your soil microbes. So, the purpose is to the um, soil a crop residue management. Because if you don't manage the residues properly, again, carbon aggregation ratio, think about that. Keep thinking about that. If carbon aggregation ratio is too high, it will be a problem that you serve to manage. Soil armor in different ways. <coughs> you can always grow a piece of power crops or something like that. Just and do nothing or maybe cut for forage. Or you can manage the residue to uh, provide power. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you need diverse crops. Now let's talk a little bit about good things about forage crops and alfalfa, right? I, it took me uh, not even 15 minutes to figure out good things about alfalfa and forage crop. You can hear it, right? Uh, I'm not using my microphone. So definitely there is no doubt with perennials, with legumes like alfalfa, we should be boosting our microbial communities, our, uh, you know, Soil health and nutrient subsidy. Uh, with forage, uh, they call it the nowadays I'm comparing this thing like smart forage technology. So your forage mix will be smart so that it can take it can take care of the goals of the farm and also goals of the soil. And if you if you manage your forage crops or it can be a pizza crop, it can be a mixed crop. I don't know. I'll be interested in testing those in, in the next couple of years. But it can be very helpful in building your soil health. So that is why I'm interested in forage crops. And, and definitely, it's a big industry for alfalfa and forage. But there are certain challenges. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the details, but we all know that, that because alfalfa market is very good right now, but it's probably not true for all, all the time. I, I was reading some reports, it, it's very fluctuating. So the profitability is always a concern. Water, uh, oh, sorry, water is always a concern in Arizona. There is no question about water. Now, public perception is another thing, and I hear that a lot because people don't think they will eat that food, the forage. They just cannot think it through and think that, okay, I only believe that it will be this crops. Uh, so, there is a challenge with public perception. So, they think utilizing, so this forage crops or alpha utilizing water is a bad thing for the system, but maybe it's not. So, we need to do a lot of research to provide some data. 
that how we can uh, make better soil health and better ecosystem health, right? And definitely summer slump is a problem and uh, me and I will be working on some couple of projects very soon, how we can manage that uh, time and how we can keep quality good and manage some water uh, through like electric water. There's some mediation uh, techniques. With that, how will end with this? I do not have uh, any tool or any chemical that will change your soil health like this. It takes time. It takes time. Everything that is low is probably more sustainable. So with me, I, I would ask you, like, I would love to hear what you think. And I'd love to hear if you can participate in my soil health needs assessment program. Uh, because I need to figure out what kind of research I should do so that I can help you out. What kind of questions you are having. And I will always, here, so I'm here, you can always call me, email me, text me. Uh, and thank you so much for hearing me out. And you guys have a good day. You can always take uh, the, uh, a, a photo of this QR code and get the, the, the online. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Jeremy, no, no, Jeremy should be on the same one.